we have an equation here x cubed minus 8 we are supposed to find the complex factors of this polynomial function and in my previous video i was talking about how to find the factors or the roots of a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula remember that all the examples i took I actually took two examples they were all equations or polynomials having a square degree for those ones we can just use the quadratic equation to what? find the complex roots but here we have a third degree here and the other degrees are missing which are zero so we can't just use the quadratic formula to solve this we need to break this down to a square power and then we can apply the quadratic formula to complete the calculation and to be able to break this down we need to find what we call a common factor a factor that when we substitute here into x it will make the whole function to be zero so after getting this common factor we need to apply division of polynomials and this will help us to break the equation down to the second degree then we can use the quadratic formula to finish the calculation so i will give you a brief explanation of division of polynomial then we will come back and finish this calculation so i've been talking about polynomials polynomials maybe you don't have an idea what is a polynomial it actually means uh, an equation that is made up of multiple terms consisting of numbers and variables so you can see that this equation is having multiple terms but it consists of numbers and what variable so this is a polynomial function again the polynomial division is also an algorithm for dividing polynomial by another polynomial of the same or lower degree that is what you must know also there are various forms of division of polynomials i will not be talking about all of them but i'll just give the examples so the first example we have here is division of polynomial by a monomial so this is the monomial and this is the polynomial and then we have another one called division of polynomial by a binomial so this is what we call the binomial by means two and poly means many and this is the polynomial and then the last one is a division of polynomial by another polynomial so you can see that we have a polynomial here being divided by another polynomial and when I was explaining, I said that the division should be such that we are dividing a polynomial by another polynomial of the same or lower degree. And you can see that this one has a degree that is lower than this one. So this one has a degree of 3, this is a degree of 2, a degree of 1, a degree of 2, a degree of 1, a degree of 2. So the degree should not be greater than what? the dividend however i'll be talking about division of polynomial by a binomial this is what i'll be talking about for the third one which is polynomial by another polynomial usually the expression is resolved into a standard form to complete the calculation i will not be talking about standard form so i will talk about this one using the long division method also note that the division algorithm for polynomial says that if we have two polynomials p of x and g of x where the second polynomial which is g of x is not equal to zero then we can write the division polynomial as p of x equals q of x times g of x plus r of x do not be confused by this when you start the calculation you will understand where p of x is called the dividend and q of x is the quotient g of s is the divisor and r of x is called the remainder now the remainder is such that it must be zero or it should have a degree that is less than g of x what is g of x we know g of x is the divisor so let me take just one example and teach you how to do the division and then we'll go back to the main question and apply that principle there to finish the calculation so let's consider this division we have a binomial here we have a polynomial so the numerator is called the dividend and then the divisor is the denominator now before we can divide this thing we need to rewrite it in another form so to do the division we need to do it one by one we will take the variable here not taking the constant we consider the one that has the variable and use it to divide each term one by one 
So the first thing we'll do is we will take the first term, which is 4x squared, and divide it by x. So we have 4x squared divided by what? x. This will cancel one of these. We are left with what? 4x. Write the 4x at the top here. So we have 4x. Now, use the 4x you have here to multiply everything you have here. So 4x times x, we write it here will give us the same 4x squared. Then 4x times 3 will give us minus 12x. Now your next step is subtract this result from the dividend, what we have here. So put this into bracket, bring your subtraction sign and then underline it. We are taking it one by one. This is how we do the subtraction. Negative times 4x squared will give us minus 4x squared. Now, when we add negative 4x squared to what we have here, to only this term, the result is 0. For 0, there is no need for me to write it. Then let's move on to the next term. We now have a term which is an x term. So we have to work it out with this x term. Note that if this x term is not there, then it means that part is 0. So I have negative times negative giving me 12x. 12x plus negative 5x will give us 7x. So we are left with what? 7x. Now, there is no constant here for us to use this to multiply and add to this. So we are done with this one. We just need to repeat this constant and start the calculation all over again. So now we have minus 21. We are coming to start the division all over again. So we take 7x and we divide by x. So 7x, this will take care of this. We are left with 7. Write your 7 here. So plus 7. Use 7 to multiply each time here. 7 times x will give us 7x. 7 times 3 will give us minus 21. Now put this into bracket. Subtract the result from 7x minus 21. This 7x minus 20 is our new dividend. So we underline it. Negative times 7x will give us minus 7x. Add it to this, the result is 0. Then negative times this will give us 21. Positive 21. Add it to this, the result is 0. So we are done with the calculation. The remainder was what? 0. So now, by the end of the day, this is what we call the quotient and this is our remainder so from here we learned about the quotient the dividend and the remainder so we have our remainder to be zero it is not all functions that will give you a zero remainder as soon as you are able to complete the calculation for the last term whatever remainder you have there you leave it so we have a remainder here and we have our quotient here this is our divisor which is this one and this is our dividend. Now, in the beginning, we learned that the division polynomial can be written as the dividend should be equal to the quotient times the divisor plus our remainder. So let us write that. Now, this is what I have here. The dividend, which is P of X, should be equal to Q of X, which is quotient times divisor plus what? Remainder. So, Dividend is equal to quotient times divisor plus remainder. This is what we have. Now, because this is already a square term, after I do the division, I can find the root of the equation of this one. It also means that when you multiply this bracket by this one, you will produce the dividend. Or when you equate the quotient times the divisor, plus the remainder which is already zero. When we equate it to zero, we can find the root of the quadratic equation. And that is what I have here. So when I equate this one to zero, I can get x is three, x is negative seven over four. But this is not what I want us to do. All I wanted us to understand is how to do the division. So you got how I did the division. We are now going to apply this process for the main question to complete the calculation to prevent this video from being too long i'm gonna take this calculation in my next video so locate division of polynomials example number one for the calculation of this work 
So thank you very much for joining me here. Please subscribe to this channel if you have not. And I hope you got the concept of what I did today. Let's move on to the next video.